Our next guest was with President Joe Biden when he made the historic trip into the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv earlier this week. Here's my conversation with National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan. How costly has the past year been for Vladimir Putin? How costly has it been for Russia, not just militarily, but also economically and also geopolitically? When you suddenly have prime ministers of, of Baltic states saying, we're not scared of the Russian military anymore, that's a pretty radical change over the past year. How damaged have they, have they been? You know, Vladimir happened? Putin spent 20 years building up an image in the world of being hyper-competent, hyper-strategic. You may hate him, you may think he has bad values, but man, you got to admit, that Vladimir Putin, he knows what he's doing. He has destroyed that credibility in the course of a year through total miscalculation, through uh, trying a strategic move that is failing day by day, and ultimately, uh, history will judge Vladimir Putin as having made one of the most grave mistakes of this century by doing what he's done. You did something pretty remarkable at the beginning of this war. You didn't work in disinformation. You actually declassified information and told the world, this is coming. They lied. You said, we've got the receipts. And, and we're actually telling the Ukrainians an invasion's coming. We basically recognized that Russia was going to run its standard playbook. They were going to accuse the Ukrainians of initiating the conflict mm -hmm. through false flag operations, uh, claiming there was some genocide in the Donbass, blowing some things up and saying the Ukrainians did it. Now we have no choice but to invade. So we knew that was coming first. Second, the Russians were going to want the element of surprise. So every day I would sit with the senior leaders of the intelligence community and say, hey, if we downgrade this information, put it out publicly, Will it hurt your sources and methods? If they said, nope, that'll work for us. We can continue to collect as we need to collect, but now you can run this information warfare operation. That's what we put out to the world. And it has meant that unlike normal, when Russia's on the front foot and we're on the back foot in the information space, now the roles are reversed. So Putin's made one miscalculation after another, after another, which has been very good news for Ukraine should be good news for NATO, should be good news for um, an American administration that wants to promote freedom. But there, of course, is the risk as well. And that is that he'll make a miscalculation that could ultimately lead to World War III, uh, even limited use of nuclear weapons. How do you balance that? For us, the right balance has been to be extremely aggressive to the tune of tens of billions of dollars of advanced weapon systems in providing Ukraine the means to defend themselves, to be forward leaning in the sharing of intelligence, but to be consistent in saying that American troops are not going to fight in Ukraine and to consistently message to the Russians through multiple channels the costs and consequences of them choosing to use nuclear weapons or choosing to attack NATO and also to carefully manage any possibility that this thing spins out of control in a way that would produce World War II. And, and how long can Putin afford to send eight to 10,000 men to their, their deaths every day? Well, I'm glad you put it that way because the other thing that they have as a, a kind of bizarre asset is a complete disregard for the lives of their soldiers. And if you're just willing to keep doing that on and on and on, you can take some limited territory. Probably can't hold it long term, and you certainly can't win this war. Uh, but that is something that Putin can keep at, and that is a challenge. Now, the Ukrainian people have proven their resilience and their resolve, and they're not going to be cowed, and they're not going to be pushed out. But it, it makes it challenging. We have to think about how we get support to the Ukrainian economy so that people can put food on the table and send their kids to school. So this is a not just a military effort. It is a whole of society effort. And, and how confident are you that the United States uh, will continue to be able to support Ukraine at the levels we have over the past year with Republicans now controlling the House and NATO? NATO's alliance uh, has strengthened over the past year. Uh, you feel confident that they'll continue to stand, all the NATO countries will continue to stand shoulder to shoulder? Every time that we have put a package up for a vote in the Congress, the Congress has added funds. 
And I know there are some critics, but the overwhelming majority of both Democrats and Republicans support this effort, see it as tied to our own interests and our own values, and I think it will continue going forward. And if Putin is betting on the United States flagging or giving up, he's making a terrible bet. Putin made a big bet, not just on America breaking, but on NATO breaking apart. And time after time, the NATO alliance has shown that simply isn't going to work. And at some point, that is going to dawn on Putin, and he's going to recognize he's up against a very formidable coalition standing behind Ukraine as it tries to defend its own freedom and dignity. Up next, to repel Putin, the West is working on getting Ukraine's President Zelensky what he needs. But will he get what he wants? My sit down with Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin next.